Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. I think I found something very interesting. I'm going to go as quickly as possible so I don't waste your time. First, I want to just kind of set up why this story is so interesting. So it is what everybody's talking about on Twitter and on YouTube. What the heck is going on between Ripple and Swift? So if we look back on December 30th, 2017, we have this tweet by David and he said, my dream scenario is Swift makes a deal with Ripple where all the banks get to use RippleNet for free, maybe even paying Swift. Fits our XRP strategy perfectly. So David, of course, is the CTO of Ripple and everyone kind of thought, wow, this is kind of amazing. But then Marcus, Marcus Trecher, who is an executive at Ripple, he's also on the board. He was on the board of Swift from 2010 to 2016. He said that will never happen. So, okay, then I believe a lot of us thought, well, we just have ourselves a very fierce competitor then. Then we had Sam. And Sam has not given up this thought. He is just convinced that Swift is going to be a Ripple customer soon. And their interface, he believes, Swift's interface, will simply be a dumb terminal for cross-border payments. He has very strong conviction. He's been doing a lot of research. He's been putting the pieces of the puzzle together. It's not been 100% convincing, but it's been convincing enough that he has everybody's attention. That's for sure. And then Forbes on the, uh, what is it, the 20th of September, uh, 10th of September, had this article. And it looks like it's, well, it's about David, but it looks like David may have um, possibly changed his tune a little bit. So he is uh, cited as saying, in short, Schwartz wants to disrupt SWIFT, the Society for the World wide interbank financial telecommunication, a Belgian cooperation, cooperative organization founded in 1973 that counts more than 10,000 financial institutions as its members and is the ultimate middleman in banking. So, okay, that's okay. Um, people change their mind all the time. But then there was this article here, coincidence? XRP price shot up near the 21st of September, same day Swift launched its products. So as you know, the pipeline for those products are as follows. You've got the Alliance Access, which is a new messaging service. Then on the same day, they did uh, the launch of the Alliance Entry, which is a lightweight version. Then there's the SwiftNet. That is the mandatory software for all Swift users, and then the Alliance Gateway, which is the communications interface to SwiftLink. All right, so when that happened, the coincidence here is that is when we saw the price just shoot up on September 20th and 21st. And that was just so surprising because it kind of came out of nowhere. Here on the left of this dotted line is the 20th, and on the right, is the 21st. So of course, people started to draw some um, conclusions that there was some connection between the launch and the price rise of XRP. And then I came across this tweet, which is by Stuart underscore XRP. And it's quite interesting. It is um, Sharish Wad, Wad like <laughs> so, so bad with last names, Wadvicker, and he is in this uh, very short video. I think turn off that sound. Um, he talks about how the openness of the new Swift platform is uh, so amazing. He says that it it doesn't reside within an uh, inside house in-house uh, setup. No, the difference is that this system allows even non-banks like fintechs to participate to improve the GPI platform. And he says it's going to be monumental. So 
I think everyone started to say, wow, well, maybe there is something going on with Swift and Ripple. Sharish, uh, um, by the way, is the managing director and global head of Standard Chartered Bank. Okay. Two days ago, Sam uploaded a new video. And I can't believe it, Sam. Just uh, two days ago, and you have over 19,000 views on that video. Pretty darn good. So there's a lot of people interested in this uh, story. And he goes on to say, and he's backing up his argument again, that Ripple and Swift are going to integrate. And he believes that Temenos, which is a financial banking software company, hints at this. So Isabel, Isabel Oliver, who's the head of payments at Swift, is quoted in this video as saying that uh, the, new, the new platform will allow customers to connect securely to multiple instant payment and clearing settlement mechanisms. That, I think, was the key quote that came out of this particular video. She also talks about um, 10 days after this mandatory upgrade, there's going to be kind of a, 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 a very important milestone. So she's alluding to some sort of announcement that's going to take place on the 30th of November. So anyway, um, Sam, I know you're on this story and uh, wait till you see what I found because I need you to do some verification. I woke up this morning and Sparrow Hoddle had tweeted these stories uh, in five parts. Basically, has Swift partnered with Ripple? Well, again, talks about different things, but this one caught my eye. So number two, when Swift GPI launched early this year, transaction speeds for the cross-border payments were stated as being 30 minutes. Five days ago, Swift's site was updated to say cross-border payments take seconds. And I thought, wow, really? So back on February 28th, 2018, it does say that overall, nearly 50% of the SWIFT GPI payments are credited to the end beneficiaries within 30 minutes and almost 100% of payments within 24 hours. Okay, and when we go to an updated version, September 12, 2018. More than 50% of the SWIFT GPI payments are credited to the beneficiary in less than 30 minutes, and many arrive in just a few seconds. That's a big difference, okay? So now we're gonna roll into the fluff story, but I'm staying with this SWIFT ripple, but I'm gonna take you to a documentation that was prepared in Japan. This is the 30-page uh, doc, doc, document uh, that was prepared by Swift Japan to introduce the GPI to the Japanese banks. And I had to pinch myself when I read some of this. So this is, I'm not gonna go through all the pages, I'll put the link in the comment section below, but it's basically an out, lying uh, or outlays the different architectures that are available. So each bank can choose its preferred ways to connect. So it could be a mix of all three. And this tracker database is, access uh, is accessible in a very kind of stripped down version. It's also available in what's called the MT199. And then you can also choose the API. And within the API, you can see here that the um, payment information is on demand and the query is, uh, it's very tiny for me to see, the query is initiated by a third party application. Okay, Sam, I think you might be right. And then we come down here and we take a look at the benefits of using that API and you get immediate error handling with API calls and error status of API call is known immediately. If you use the MT199, it's almost immediate. 
but not immediate. So the API is synchronous, point to point. The MT199 is asynchronous. Again, Sam, I think you are right. And then look at this. You have the different kind of architectures. This is where I had to pinch myself. In this option, the Light2 customers are using tokens today on internet. So I think this is absolutely a very strong possibility that the token is XRP and this third party in the API option is Ripple. So you can take a look, you can read through these things and, and see that the API is uh, using the internet. You're connected to the web, it says right here. So I don't know, I, I would really love to have more people look at this and tell me if they agree or if they have a different take on it. But Sam, I'm sending this to you and I can't wait for you to give your opinion. Okay, everybody, please take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.